Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, I think uh, now we are going to start uh, uh, our today's presentation. Uh, again, welcome back, everyone. Um, uh, this is a webinar series on introduction to satellite remote sensing for air quality applications. Uh, this is session three, where we will talk about uh, uh, aerosols product uh, for particulate matter air quality monitoring. The outline for today's talk is uh, first I will introduce some of the terminology uh, or the parameters which we receive from the satellite. Uh, then we will talk a little bit about uh, uh, relationship between satellite and surface observations and then uh, mostly will spend time in learning about different uh, aerosols product uh, which can be used for particulate matter air quality from NASA uh, and then uh, simultaneously I will also uh, provide the tools where you can download the data. Okay, again just to revise this uh, webinar series agenda, in week one we did the remote sensing fundamental of remote sensing. Last week we learned about uh, satellite imageries, mainly true color imageries and how to access and what information it contains. Today we'll learn about the source data and then next week we will have a guest speaker uh, who will talk about the trace case data sets. Okay, so I believe most people or everyone is familiar with the PM2.5. PM2.5 is the mass concentration of particle less than 2.5 micrometer in aerodynamic diameter and they are measured at the surface. So these are the sub nose level air pollution which we call. Uh, they have impact on health, visibility and many other sectors. So in this example, uh, basically what we are trying to look the relationship between visibility and PM2.5. Uh, I'm just trying to show you how does it impact the visibility. So this is picture taken over Pittsburgh uh, in USA. And the picture is taken at the same location at the same time of the day, but on two different days under two different uh, PM2.5 uh, loading in the atmosphere. So on the 1st July 2nd 2001 uh, the picture is taken when PM2.5 was measured as 45 microgram per cubic meter and you can see image is very hazy things uh, are not visible in the image. On the right side uh, July 18 when PM2.5 was measured at 4 microgram per cubic meter and we can see the impact very well uh, the visibility is very high, uh, we can think, see things very clearly. So this is one of the example where PM2.5 mass concentration in the atmosphere does impact the visibility. Uh, here is another same example top where we have high loading of aerosols or PM2.5 in the atmosphere and on the bottom uh, you have very clean condition and this picture is particularly from Singapore in Asia. Okay, so the quantity which we get from the satellite is not PM2.5. We get something called aerosol optical depth. Uh, it's also called aerosol optical thickness. Uh, for satellite community both uh, these terms AOD or AOT are same. Uh, these are optical measurement uh, of light extinctions uh, used to represent uh, aerosol amount in the entire column of the atmosphere. So this is not direct mass measurement of uh, PM2.5 but an optical measurement of aerosol loading in the entire column of the atmosphere. When I say entire column it means from surface to the satellite height. So that is what we call aerosol optical depth. Uh, we can learn a little bit more about aerosol optical depth. So this 
quantity can be measured uh, from the ground uh, based instrument, instrument called sun photometer which you can see here on the top left corner uh, on the bottom left corner so you have an instrument which is looking to the sun and when it looks to the sun it basically make measurement of direct solar radiation in specific wavelength and this direct radiation is impacted by uh, different component which are in the atmosphere clouds aerosols trace gases uh, uh, air molecules and other uh, other kind of things and this instrument is capable of giving you aerosol optical depth after all these corrections from other component of the atmosphere so the optical depth express the quantity of light removed from a beam by scattering or absorption depending on the property of aerosols which we are making during its path through the medium so when sunlight passes through this atmosphere uh, it attenuates or the light is removed or lost in the space uh, either due to scattering by this particle or by absorption of this particle again that will depend on the chemical composition and size and shape of the particle uh, here is a mathematical term uh, where optical depth is defined so if you want to get total atmospheric optical depth is a component of three things uh, tau is a click letter which is used to define optical depth so you have a Rayleigh optical depth which is basically air molecules uh, you have aerosol optical depth and the gas molecule the gas and Rayleigh we can calculate theoretically and then we can subtract that from the total and that's how we get aerosol optical depth uh, NASA has a huge network of these ground based sun photometer which make continuous measurement of aerosol optical depth from more than 400 locations around the world and this uh, network is primarily designed to um, validate uh, NASA satellite data product and it provides the ground truth so same quantity which we derive from the satellite is measured from this ground based measurement and then we use these to uh, make sure the satellite products are right and to check their uh, quality and uncertainties in the product uh, here is a website where you can access all the data from this network uh, uh, and they are available free for anybody to download okay now let's talk about uh, we talked about two quantities one is the pm 2.5 and then the second one is the aerosol optical depth so pm 2.5 is measured at surface by air quality agencies for monitoring air quality aerosol optical depth is measured from the satellite or ground instrument uh, and it's an optical property so let's learn a little bit more about this in this picture uh, this is earth surface where you have a instrument called uh, uh, sampler or uh, there are different type of pm 2.5 measurement instrument t ohm sampler or bam depending on what uh, instrument you are using they are sitting either on the ground on the, the top of the building and they are making continuous measurement of mass concentration in microgram per cubic meter a, for a standard uh, they are dry mass uh, in this particular size range whereas the aerosol optical depth is represent for the entire column so surface to the top of the atmospheres and it is measured by the satellite and the current resolution of this vertical column is about 10 kilometer in the horizontal direction so the each uh, column bit is about 10 10 by 10 square kilometer uh, in case of model so these are two different quantities which we are trying to use for air quality uh, one is directly related to air quality at the surface and one is indirectly related to air quality at the surface and we'll see how they are related but this is in uh, theory how they are same or different uh, here is another uh, some more words on the similarities and difference between these two quantities uh, from the satellite you get aerosol optical depth it's a column integrated values it's an optical measurement it's a unit less quantity that's very important to note 
uh, and this aerosol optical depth is a function of stage shape of the particle, size of the particle, type of the particle, number concentration, and the wavelength at which measurements are made. So these are the component which actually controls the aerosol optical depth in the atmosphere. On the right side, uh, you have an instrument which is making PM 2.5 mass concentration. It's a in unit of volume. Uh, aerosol particle for less than 2 mic 2.5 micrometer in aerodynamic diameter. This is something defined by the air quality community. And it is represent mass loading at the measurement height, 10 meter, 20 meter, or whatever height this instrument is located. So it you can consider this is a more like a point measurement from the surface, whereas the satellite is giving you much more bigger picture uh, of what's happening in larger area and larger column of the atmosphere. Now, in last one and a half decade, there have been many, many studies uh, which uh, demonstrate that the two quantity, aerosol optical depth and PM 2.5 or PM 2 PM10 uh, have some kind of a relationship. And these are the two scatter plot from the earliest study in 2003. Uh, on the left, you see aerosol optical depth on x axis from the satellite, and the PM10, uh, sorry, in this case, aerosol optical depth is measured from the aeronet, and then PM10 measured at another ground location. This is a measurement from the northern Italy. And what you see is there is a linear correlation between these two quantity. Although they are different in many ways, as we have seen earlier, but there is a relationship between these two quantity. Uh, of course, there is scattered, but they are linearly correlated. Uh, in the same year, there was another study which was focused on PM2.5 in Northern America. And this is in uh, seven station in Alabama, Hunts, in the Alabama region of United States. Uh, where they have compared PM2.5 on x-axis to MODIS aerosol optical depth on y-axis. And again, you can see large scatter between these two quantity, but they are linearly correlated and they have, uh, so these analysis suggest that there is a potential of using aerosol optical depth to obtain PM2.5 values under certain condition and under center certain assumptions. Uh, these are the first studies. Since then, uh, there have been hundreds or I would say thousands of studies published since then, uh, which demonstrate and refines the methods over the time. And I'll show a little bit more on that. So this is another uh, study uh, and which basically demonstrate that the relationship which we have seen in earlier plot in terms of the correlation coefficient between aerosol optical depth and PM2.5 does vary in space and time. So this is over entire United States. All these locations are EPA ground monitor locations. And the, they are color coded as a linear correlation coefficients between aerosol optical depth and derived from the satellite and PM2.5 measured from the surface. What you see here is on the eastern US, uh, the correlations between these quantity is very high. And as you move to the Midwest uh, and in West uh, US, the correlation has gone down. And this suggests that the AOD PM 2.5 relationship does depend on many different parameters. Number one is the meteorology, local meteorology, the boundary layer, height, temperature, relative humidity, other factors. Second, it also suggests that the uncertainties or the quality of aerosol optical depth retrieved from the satellite also significantly impacts the relationship. Because uh, we know for sure that in the eastern US, modest dark target aerosol optical depth does perform well when we compare with aeronet measurement. Whereas in the west, uh, it does not, and that is related to the surface characterization of uh, in the algorithm and which we can talk a little bit uh, more uh, when we do some advanced training or advanced topic. 
but this is uh, the take home message is that the relationship between AOD and PM 2.5 does vary in a space and time. We have seen this relationship as a function of different seasons and it does vary. Now that's very simple uh, method which we have seen just taking two quantities uh, deriving a relationship called regression equation. So but over the year there have been number of methods uh, developed more sophisticated methods uh, for uh, which provide better estimation of PM 2.5. Uh, so here I have listed just four of the methods. Uh, there are many more actually people have done uh, but these are most popular am among those. So the two variable method is uh, easiest to do the one which we have just seen in previous two plots uh, where you have AOD and PM 2.5 and you make a relationship which is a simple regression linear fit y equal to mx plus c type of where you have a slope m and an inter intercept c. Uh, it works in many cases, it does not work in other cases. Uh, and again, it depends on many other factors. Uh, then you have a multivariate method where you just not only include the satellite derived aerosol optical depth, but you include other meteorological parameter which governs the PM 2.5 mass concentration at the surface. Uh, you can go beyond the simple linear regression to more uh, sophisticated non-linear statistical modeling like artificial intelligence or genetic algorithm where you can treat this individual variable in more, no, more non-linear relationship with uh, PM 2.5 and often they produce better results than simple linear regression equations. Uh, there is another method where you actually combine the uh, chemical transport model derived vertical profile with satellite derived aerosol optical depth and the combination provide you a surface PM 2.5 value at each grid point on the earth surface. The advantage of this method is basically you don't need surface monitor to calibrate whereas in all this statistical modeling you need some kind of a surface measurement of PM 2.5. Uh, this method is very useful uh, when you want to get a long term mean values uh, and I will show you in a minute a product based on this method which you can use. Uh, data simulation uh, is a, another very powerful technique where you can actually assimilate satellite data into existing air quality or climate model uh, to get better estimation of PM 2.5 but these are under utilized at the current moment and people are trying to uh, make use of this technique more and more. So this is just an overview of uh, techniques which are available. So like I was mentioning this is one of the annual mean satellite derived PM 2.5 product uh, available over global regions. Uh, it is uh, work done by a uh, researcher at uh, Dalhousie University in Canada. Uh, they have used multiple uh, NASA satellite data sets along with uh, uh, global, um, global chemical transport model uh, and combined them with uh, their methodology using a scaling approach which I just talked and come up with a global 10 kilometer spatial resolution uh, annual mean PM 2.5 numbers uh, for uh, and this is available from since 2000 I think 1998 to current uh, until 2015. Uh, the data is available through this website in different format. Uh, they have a CSV format, uh, uh, NetCDF and uh, I believe the Google uh, uh, which is KMC format. Uh, you can obtain this data directly free of charge uh, and download and process and perform your own analysis. Uh, they also have a paper which uh, is describe the methods and uncertainties and validation results uh, from this data product. So uh, this is the I think only global PM 2.5 product available uh, for different types of analysis. But remember this is not daily values, not seasonal or monthly value. These are only available on annual mean scale. 
those of you who wants to learn more about this DM 2.5 data, uh, I would request uh, sign up with our RSET list sub or stay tuned with the RSET website because we are going to do a specialized advanced uh, webinar series in the month of January 2017 where we'll talk about the CM 2.5 data, uh, we'll talk about some of the tools and we do some uh, analysis using this data and this is to address some of the sustainable development goals set by United Nations for various purposes. So please stay tuned if you want to learn more about these data sets and you learn how to use them. Okay, so before I go from aerosols data uh, from the satellite, uh, I have few quick uh, quizzes for you to take. So let's do that. Uh, let's. So the first question is: Aerosol optical depth represent aerosol loading at the surface. True or false? Second question is PM 2.5 mass concentration is represented in microgram per cubic meter whereas the aerosol optical depth is and the third question is AOD PM 2.5 relationship varies in space and time true and false and these are just based on what we just talked in last 15 minutes so just take 30 more seconds to respond and then we will move forward with this uh, question answers mm, with the presentation. Excuse me. Okay, so the first question is uh, uh, the answer is false. So about 67% people have responded correctly. Uh, so aerosol optical depth does not represent aerosol loading at the surface. It represents aerosol loading in the entire column of the atmosphere. Uh, so please uh, that's an important aspect of satellite data uh, before you can use it for satellite air quality. Second question is PM 2.5 mass concentration is represented in microgram per cubic meter whereas aerosol optical depth is a unit less quantity. Uh, so about 60% people have responded correctly that uh, it's not in meter, not nanometer, not in milligram per cubic meter. It's uh, unitless quantity as we uh, see in the earlier slides. The third question is AOD PM 2.5 relationship varies and the space and time. Yes, it's true. Uh, we have seen a special distribution of correlation across the US in a uh, few slides ago. So with that, let's move on to the next uh, section. Uh, where we'll talk about a specific aerosol product or aerosol optical depth product uh, which can be useful in deriving PM 2.5 uh, for certain applications. Okay, so before we move to the aerosol product, I just would like to uh, make a note here uh, about the satellite data. So often you will hear this levels of the data. Whenever we talk about the satellite data, there are different levels of the data. So level one are basically true color calibrated radiance or the images uh, which we discussed in the last week's presentation. Level two are more geophysical product uh, such as aerosol optical depth. Uh, they are derived using level one product uh, along with algorithms and radio transfer calculations. 
and then the level three are basically derived from the level two they are more averaged product on spatial and temporal scale so uh, level two mode is aerosol optical depth is 10 kilometer resolution whereas level three is at one degree spatial resolution so you average over space and then you also average over time so you can average on a weekly basis monthly basis seasonal basis annual basis so just uh, this is an important information to uh, the level one products are uh, basically same thing they are raw data there's no aerosol data in level one level two there's aerosol data these are geophysical parameters and level three they are globally graded geophysical products means there is aerosol product but they are averaged over space and time uh, in terms of easy to access easy to access and use the level 3 data are easiest to use and access uh, but you have less control on the data and quality if you start with level 2 and level 1 data you have more user control on what to use what not to use so just a very brief uh, about level 3 data uh, several satellite does provide aerosols data for air quality applications uh, among them there are two modus sensor which we talked last week also on terra and aqua it does give you aerosol optical depth there is another sensor called uh, miser uh, which is also on board on the terra satellite which also provides you aerosol uh, optical depth and in some cases aerosol height uh, OMI is another sensor which we'll talk a little bit and then the VIRS which was is the new sensor which does provide you this product. Uh, here are some the instrument resolution at which the measurements are made not necessarily the resolution of aerosol product. So you have a MODIS which has a 250 meter resolution to 1 kilometer depending on the band. Uh, then you have a MISER which is 275 meter resolution to 1.1 kilometer again depending on which band you are talking uh, OMI is a coarser resolution instrument it's 13 by 24 kilometer uh, VIRS is the new one which is 750 meter resolution for all the bands this table is for your reference I'm not going to discuss it here but it does compare all the aerosols product their strength weakness and this can be very useful when you want to decide which product I should be using for particular application. Uh, the one thing which is highlighted here in the red box are the spatial resolutions. So you can see the mode is 10 and 3 kilometer, miser is 17.6 kilometer aerosol product, uh, ohm is 13 by 24 kilometer, and the VIRS product is 750 meter resolution and 6 kilometer resolution. So uh, this is one of the important aspect when you choose. Uh, which product to use to address a specific air quality question. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the MODIS data. Uh, MODIS is uh, an instrument which is on board on two satellites as we discussed. Uh, it has a level 2 aerosol product uh, at 10 kilometer. Uh, the product name, each MODIS products are named specifically. They are named as MOD04. This is aerosol product mod is modis and o4 is the product number so mod if it is from terra if it is aqua then it is myd04 so mod o4 and mod o4 and then this is level 2 this is typical file name of modis aerosol product and this file name uh, is in edge uh, this file is in hdf format uh, which you can read about more on online and each file contains several SDS parameter and the file name also contains some of the important information. So first is the product name level 2, then you have a number which start with A which is year, uh, then you have a Julian day 079, so January 1st will be 001, January 15 will be 015 and similarly you can start counting from January 1st to December 31st will be 365 uh, depending on the leap year. So this is the Julian day and then you have a time and this time is 0 to uh, 255 GMT. This is time in the UTC time, GMT time. 
then this is something called collection 006 is the collection uh, so each mode is data are processed using different algorithms and as time with time these algorithm evolve or improve so when new algorithm becomes available they process the reprocess the data using that algorithm and every new release of the data is called collection so currently the latest collection of the data is called collection 6 and that's what it represent here and then you have a processing file processing information here which is may not be useful for uh, your purposes uh, these hdf data can be read in many different uh, offline and online tools uh, which are either licensed or freely available so there are hdf look panoply these are free software available from the nasa site uh, python can be used which is also free and then you have a ideal matlab fortran which are more uh, licensed version which can also be used to read the hdf data so depending on your requirement application and availability of the software you can use any of these similarly uh, modis has also recently released a three kilometer product uh, which has a similar name instead of level 2 you see a 3k here model for 3k and the file name remains same as earlier uh, both 3 kilometer and 10 kilometer are consistent in terms of the parameters name file name and everything only difference is their spatial resolution and they have also gone through the same algorithm so there is a uh, consistency within the product each hdf file contains several sds so sds are scientific data sets uh, and in other words they are geophysical parameter like aerosol optical depth uh, latitude longitude angles and many other things uh, the relevant uh, sds for air quality work are optical depth land and ocean uh, this is retrieved using dark target algorithm uh, only for high quality so each pixel which we retrieved uh, from the satellite uh, is associated with a quality flag uh, which depends on the algorithm and absorbing con uh, and observation condition so uh, over land quality flag 3 is recommended to use over ocean uh, mode star target algorithm team recommend using quality flag 1 2 and 3 uh, again this product is available in 10 and 3 kilometer uh, there's another product uh, and this dark target product is available over only vegetated surface and over water so if surface is very bright such as saharan deserts or uh, other deserts of the world then this dark target product is not available uh, to get the value over bright surfaces there is another product called deep blue aerosol optical depth and in this specific sds uh, we have combined dark target and deep blue uh, product at 550 nanometer and this is available using this you can access this particular parameter using this sds uh, this product is only available at 10 kilometer spatial resolution because deep blue does not provide three kilometer products so that is why it's only available at 10 kilometer uh, then there is a quality flag associated with this uh, which you can use uh, if you are trying to use this specific data sets uh, you can get more information about this product uh, by this uh, uh, research paper which explain this product in much more great detail here are some of the website where you can access uh, MODIS data. The LATS website, the first one, uh, MODIS Atmosphere site has uh, RGB and level 3 data product and imageries. Uh, Giovanni is another tool uh, where you can access and analyze uh, MODIS level 3 aerosols data. And if you want to learn about the specific algorithm of the data sets, then the two algorithm dark target algorithm has a website here and then the similarly deep blue algorithm website is there so again if you want to if you're interested in specific data you can learn about more about this data by going and reading uh, stuff which are posted on this website okay 
the next sensor is uh, called omi it's a ozone monitoring instrument uh, it is on board on a eos earth observing satellite uh, called aura uh, there are other sensors on board on aura uh, but omi is one of the main sensors uh, it's an international collaboration between holland Un usa and finland mm, it was launched in 2004 and since then it is providing high quality update data uh, omi makes measurements in uv and visible part of solar spectrum from 270 nanometer to 500 nanometer it's an hyper spectral instrument as we discussed in week one it has very high spectral resolution uh, and it has low spatial resolution which is 13 by 24 kilometer Soth width of OMI is similar to MODIS, which is 2600 kilometer. It does provide you global coverage on daily basis. But you can see some orbital gaps in the data here as well. Uh, the main product relevant to air quality, which comes from the OMI, are column amount of ozone. Uh, it does not give you ozone at the surface, but it gives you entire column of the atmosphere which mainly comes from the stratosphere it does give you nitrogen dioxide sulfur dioxide uh, and some other trace gases and then also provide aerosols so omi is good in detecting absorbing type of aerosol which is comes from usually fine dust and smoke particles from the fires uh, here is an product called aerosol index which comes from the omi and here it just shows uh, two applications where it has been applied so on the top right you see uh, the red color which is an aerosol optic uh, aerosol index and what it does shows is that when you have aerosols above the cloud then this aerosol index can show you some of the values very high values which is not possible from the aerosol optical depth measurement because if there is a cloud aerosol optical depth measurements are usually not available but in this specific case uh, this aerosol index does show value the bottom panel shows the application of aerosol index in tracking the transport of a smoke so this is about 11 days uh, uh, transport of high latitude high altitude smoke layer um, which is originated in Australia so there was there were fire on the Australia east coast of Australia uh, which put out a lot of smoke in the atmosphere and it got into the weather system and transported all along the ocean and in around 11 days it actually reached back to the Australia so by looking this daily imageries of satellite data you can track how things are moving so this is another cool application of um, omi data here is a website where you can learn more about aerosol data from omi instrument uh, it's a typical file name of omi which has similar information as modis uh, but in little bit in different form uh, again OMI has a different aerosol product which you can again learn level 2, level 2 G, 3, level 3 product and this website does provide you nice description of the product and how to use it and also has some of the tools which you can download to uh, read the data. The next instrument is called MISER. Uh, MISER is a multi-angle imaging spectral radiometer. Uh, it is also on board on the Terra satellite. Uh, MISER is very special instrument in a way that it has four spectral channel, uh, but it has nine different viewing angles. So if you look this image on the left, you see the MISER instrument is looking the same piece of the Earth in different angles. So MODIS on the other hand is only nadir viewing camera so it only can see things just below the camera in the nadir direction whereas the miser 
can see things in different angles. And advantage of that uh, you might have experience in your day-to-day -day life when you look things using different angles, they look a little bit different. So what you see here are series of images uh, taken uh, by different angles uh, of models. So the first image is from the Nadir viewing angle. And as you move forward, then there are other images which are taken from the different angles. So 45 degree, 60 degree, and 75 degree forward viewing angle. And what you see interesting feature here is that when you look the Nadir, and you don't see any sign of haze, things look very clear. But if you look the same piece of land from a different angle, then you start seeing a lot of haze around that region. And that's very important aspect uh, of MISER that you can look things which are undetected in Nadir viewing angles. And these angular observations uh, uh, makes MISER capable of providing additional information uh, such as particle shape, size, uh, aerosol height under specific conditions. So that's main advantage of MISER over MODIS instrument. Uh, here is an example of a uh, MISER data product. Uh, again, this is a RGB or true color image from the MISER at 60 degree forward viewing angle. Uh, these are heights in kilometer for all of these pixels. Uh, then you have a smoke mask from MISER and then you have optical depth derived. So again, these are from uh, fires in Alaska in 2004. Uh, which demonstrate the additional capabilities of MISER, which is not uh, possible from instrument like my uh, MODIS. The, the downside of MISER is that it's limited sort width. If you remember in week one and week two, we, we specifically in week one, we talked about the sort width or the spatial coverage. And we talked that MISER has a very narrow SWAT. Uh, MODIS and OMI, as we discussed earlier, has uh, 2,300 to 2,600 kilometer SWAT width, so they, and that provides global coverage. But MISER, on the other hand, is about 380 kilometer SWAT width, and which you can see here is that lot of gaps in the data. So this is one day coverage of MISER, and you can see it only covers very small fraction of global area. So if you want to get a global coverage from MISER, it takes about eight to nine days to provide a global picture of aerosols. That's a downside. It does provide you high quality data, but its coverage is limited. So that's a, a main limitation of using MISER data for day-to-day -day air quality monitoring. Uh, again, here are some information about MODIS level two and level three aerosols data. Uh, mod MISER data comes into our each. So in this each, each strip is one orbit. So the data comes for entire orbit. One file come for one orbit. And this contained data for about 98 minutes. Uh, spatial resolution is 17.6 kilometer for level two. Uh, when you go to the level three, the data is available into half degree and one degree uh, at daily, monthly, and seasonal graded data. Uh, this is typical name of MISER aerosol product. And uh, the information in MISER file is a uh, little bit different than MODIS and OMI. It, it is more coded in terms of uh, satellite terminology and satellite orbit. Uh, but again, if you go through this website, uh, there is a very nice tutorial on how to use MISER data, how to access. Uh, there are tools which you can download to read the data uh, and to analyze the data. So all the information is available on their website. Okay, so the next answer is called VIRS. Uh, so you see what I'm trying to do here in this presentation is giving you a very quick view of available uh, data sets, aerosols data sets from different sensors. 
Uh, I'm not going into more detail of each specific sensors and data sets because that's a topic for ad advanced training. Uh, here my purpose is to provide you a overview and then you make the decision which is more relevant satellite or sensors or product for your application and then you can get advanced training on that specific uh, uh, sensor or product. Uh, Vis uh, VS is stand for visible infrared imaging radiometer. This is one of the newest instrument on board on NOAA's uh, NPP uh, satellite mission. Uh, it is in many ways it is very similar to MODIS, uh, but it also in many ways different than MODIS. Uh, here we are just comparing the MODIS and VS. There are some of the things which are important for air quality application which are highlighted in the yellow here, the SWAT. Uh, MODIS is 2300 kilometer, whereas the VS is about 3000 kilometer. And we have seen that in the previous week, and I'll show you again that because of this larger SWAT width, uh, VS does provide complete global coverage without any orbital gaps, which we see in MODIS data. The pixel resolution at Nadir uh, in case of MODIS is about half kilometer which can go to two kilometer at the edge of the SWAT. Uh, VS does some kind of averaging sampling uh, which does not allow that pixels to grow that big. So the VS uh, pixel at the Nadir is about 750 meter resolution which can grow up to 1.5 kilometer at the edge. Again, here is an example of coverage. Uh, MODIS files comes into five minutes of the data, which does cover larger area. Uh, whereas VS data comes uh, from this small files of 86 seconds uh, and does cover larger SWAT width, but smaller uh, area. So these are the just in order how the two data sets are arranged. Again, this slide we have seen in previous weeks, uh, basically trying to show that because of the larger SWAT, uh, VS does provide you global coverage without any data gaps, whereas the MODIS does have these data gaps, the blue color here, uh, which is not possible due to the limited SWAT width. Uh, Currently, uh, most of the VS data is available from the NOAA because NOAA is the main agency who maintained the VS currently. Uh, and these data are available from the NOAA class website. Uh, they have a level two data just like MODIS and they also have a level three data which is quarter degree graded data. Again, this website does provide uh, some tools and some tutorials on how to use the data, how to obtain the data. Uh, in future, uh, NASA is also planning to produce their own VS data and as it becomes available, uh, we will uh, provide more for the training on those products. Okay, now I would also like to introduce, uh, this is just one slide, uh, there's a one important thing, uh, aspect or the quantity which we need to convert the aerosol optical depth into PM2.5 is vertical profile of the aerosols. So if we know how aerosols are distributed in the vertical column of the atmosphere, then probably we can estimate PM2.5 with more certainty, with more accuracy. So Calypso is a instrument. Uh, it's an active instrument. Uh, we talked about it little bit in the week one. Uh, it's a LIDAR in the space. Uh, it has two wavelengths, uh, 512, 532 nanometer and 1064 nanometer. Uh, it is used for cloud and aerosol detection. And you can see the advantage of Calypso here is that basically it does give you a nice curtain plots like that vertical information about different features in the atmosphere. Uh, here on the left side, you see a uh, coverage of Calypso. It's uh, it's like Calypso is like a point measurement. So the footprint on the ground is about 100 meter uh, spatial resolution and it has very 
uh, it does take about more than a month to cover entire globe so it's a glo uh, special coverage is very limited but it does uh, provide very very useful information on the vertical distribution of aerosols here in this you see a curtain plot where uh, on the y-axis you see the different height from 0 to 25 kilometer and you can identify different features based on their uh, a spectral response in those two channels um, and again I'm not going to discuss a lot about the, the how the sensors make measurement in the product but just to make you aware that there is product which does provide vertical information and it can be used. Uh, Calisso usually require a little bit more expertise uh, in terms of the data use uh, and you can find more details on the Calisso website. Here are some uh, general uh, links and references uh, which I have used throughout in this presentation. Uh, also, it does provide you useful uh, resources uh, uh, for each of these sensors which we talked. Uh, there are some uh, idea and smoke blocks uh, are based on the they are tools uh, which use heavily satellite data uh, and they are more focused on the United States. Uh, we have our set air quality web page also where we does provide a lot of Python tools, a lot of uh, tables about these data sets and uh, more link to so that you can learn more about the data sets. Uh, with that, uh, I think I'm done. There is again no assignment this week uh, as we have done. Uh, next week we have a guest speaker, Dr. Brian Duncan, uh, who is also a scientist here at NASA Goddard. He will talk about the Tresquis product, specifically NO2, SO2 and CO product and will show some of the applications uh, how to use it. And as always, again, all the materials uh, recording uh, from this webinar series is available uh, from this website. Uh, we also have a contact details. If you have a technical question, please send me an email. Uh, if you have more logistic question or you want to learn more about future training uh, or interested your organization in conducting your own training, uh, please do write to Brock. Uh, he will be very useful and uh, happy to help you. So with that, thank you very much. And I will be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Okay, so there is a question, is there any reason to plot PM2.10 PM uh, on y-axis and PM2.5 on x-axis on slide 13? So those two plots I have taken from two different studies uh, and I don't see any specific reason for doing that. It's I think just a choice of individual person. Uh, 
in general uh, your plot uh, things uh, the uh, in general the reference item is plotted on x axis uh, whereas the quantity which you are interested in obtaining you plot on the y axis so i i would usually do uh, optical depth on x axis and pm 2.5 on y axis Okay, so does the miser get observation for all the different angle at the same time? Uh, okay, so this is a little bit tricky because it does get uh, a simultaneous measurement at all the angles, but in order to cover the same area, uh, it does scan for different angle and that can take some time. But that scanning time is not very large. I think I believe it's uh, in order of seconds. So within or uh, within within less than a minute or so, it does a scan for all nine angles. Okay, another question is Calypso used to split data from. Uh, OME into tropospheric and total column data or is done in another way uh, okay so you can use Calypso for those kind of analysis and research uh, we don't have any specific product uh, based on that kind of methodology uh, again it will depend on your application and what parameter you are interested in uh, for aerosols uh, it it may it may be possible up to some extent uh, in a specific case under certain scenario but not the always not always so probably in cases like volcanic eruption probably you can apply those kind of things uh, but not in general because their uh, coverage is very very different can we estimate pm 2.5 without ground monitoring station Okay, so the one of the method which I discussed and for which the data is also available from the Dalhousie University, that method does not require PM2.5 at the ground. Uh, it's combined satellite data with the model to get PM2.5. Uh, but the problem with that method is uh, since we don't have ground network available, we don't know what's the quality. Uh, the limited validation is done using annual mean numbers so it's good for annual mean numbers uh, but uh, there are uncertainties in that product okay again the uh, one is uh, one method of doing the pm 2.5 aod correlation and i'm explained in one of the slide there are other methods to do AOD PM 2.5 is to use more parameter like metrology, uh, use vertical information from the satellite or model uh, to do PM 2.5. So there are other methods which we discussed in one of the slides and there are references uh, if you want to learn more about it. Okay. Uh, Another question about the LIDAR. Is the data available from Calypso? Yes, the LIDAR data is available from the Calypso. Again, uh, uh, I think uh, if you uh, search in search engine Calypso data, NASA, you should find the link. Uh, all the NASA data is available from uh, different website and they are free. Does VS detect halogen? bromine iodine uh, I don't believe so uh, in my knowledge no okay since MODIS does not report data in different angle as miser, how reliable actual decision making? Okay, well, 
so my modis has other ways to do it. so if you notice miser has only four spectral bank in which it make measurement whereas modis uh, has 36 different spectral bank so although it does not have uh, angular information but it has a spectral information uh, which can be used to uh, make sure we are detecting right features in the data of course uh, both have their advantage and limitations uh, but it does uh, provide reliable uh, data sets Okay, there is a question about uh, we have internet problem yes so the recordings will be available and from the RSET website which I shown in the last slide and you can do that uh, at your convenience okay another question since the aeronet data are used for validation does it mean it is more accurate than satellite one if I want to conduct a study in the location where any data available which data is better to use okay yes so aeronet data are uh, definitely much more accurate we consider them as a ground truth it means they are most accurate data for aerosol optical depth uh, and that is why we use them to validate the satellite so if I have options to use between aeronet and satellite data, I will of course use aeronet data for my purpose if that served the purpose. What are the basic modification of collection 6 AOD data product? Okay, I'm not sure what is referring here. If you are trying to say what have what's improvement. Uh, between collection 5 and collection 6 uh, yes there have been a lot of improvement actually in collection 6 uh, we have revised how we do the gas correction we have revised how we do the surface characterization uh, and there are other uh, cloud masking and water masking have been applied so the collection 6 data are more consistent and more uh, much better than collection 5 uh, but there were calibration issues which have been corrected in collection 6 are these data product GIS software friendly I believe so because uh, some of the data are available in GOT format which can be used by GIS software and uh, the new GIS software like ArcGIS uh, are they can handle HDF data so yes I would say yes they are uh, GS software friendly why fine mode aerosol optical depth is removed in collection 6 okay so the fine mode optical depth is uh, so what we provide in collection 6 is called fine mode fraction and if you multiply that with the fine mode uh, total optical depth you get fine mode optical depth so that was just an extra parameter which was there second uh, since we have not done any validation of fine mode aerosol optical depth or in, in other words we don't have confidence in using that over land and that's another reason we have removed uh, the fine mode aerosol optical depth over land from the collection six okay there is another question the resource link can show uh, the data from those resource links also have a real time data so to get the real time data uh, i think uh, in week 2 last week we uh, have gone through exercise called world view uh, and the world view provide near real time data all the link which i have given today uh, are not real time data they are uh, archived data Viewers recording the active fire. Yes, Viewer does records active fire, and that data is also available uh, through world view in near real time and through other sources.
okay uh, how accurate are the current measurement of aod taken from wears some time ago there seems to be some problem when plotting erroneous data versus aod because the trend of the scatter plot was not there was a big deviation in the slope value okay so again like every satellite uh, every algorithms uh, data evolves over time uh, in the beginning yes fierce data has some problem uh, but uh, over the time they have improved um, i think they have now better product and the quality of the fierce data product is comparable to what we have from modis is modis data is reliable over uh, hilly regions or high i would say high altitude regions uh, with dark forest cover uh, so there not have been many uh, validation studies where we have compared the data over high latitude stations in most cases it looks good uh, but may vary depending on how complex the topography is uh, there have been some studies in the us and other places uh, so probably it will also depend uh, how complex the topography is okay there is a question on mode is aod at 869 nanometer is reliable to study over the productivity i believe you are talking about the ocean productivity uh, uh, i'm not 100% sure but if you refer to the paper which uh, is uh, referred in that particular slide uh, i believe you can get more uh, uh, more better answer uh, and if you are interested please write me an email and i will try to get you a better answer okay between level 2 and level 3 which one is better for event analysis and for long term analysis again it depends uh, if you are looking a specific event and the size and extent spatial extent of the event will determine uh, it also depends on what features you are trying to look uh, i would always prefer level 2 data because then i know the quality and its high resolution uh, you can use level 3 data to start with uh, but for quantitative analysis i would always prefer level 2 data uh, with quality control okay i think uh, that's all i have and i don't see any further question uh, so uh, uh, we have uh, doc blevin who is uh, helping with this webinar series uh, he is training coordinator uh, brock do you have any any other question from the audience 